Yeah, I believe I was talking about the way the way I was learning the game was uh, yeah, more so through the video, you know, watching watching actual games. It was yeah. uh, was was the biggest thing I felt like in my development was was actually understanding the game from a uh, from watching a game, not just coming in and 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 trying to uh, uh, just training because that was a big part. You know, that was a technical technical part of that was was big, but uh, understanding of the game where to make runs how to make runs um for me that was that was watching games in full was the biggest thing and i feel like it's 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 different nowadays with the kids now even even with our college kids sometimes we'll just send them clips of videos you know of that um and at at times i feel like they should just watch the whole game just to see i mean because it's very important to me like i feel like even let's say throwing what the guy does when when it, things happen in the throne what if the people organize and if the people are where they are, are they clicking off or they clicking in? So small little like this, that's for me, that could be a winning moment in a game. So that was emphasized for me at, at the younger age, at least. I, I understood if I want to go places, I need to understand more of a game and totality. Um, I was an offensive player, so I watch a lot of offensive things, you know what I mean? Um, maybe defensively, I was not as as understanding, let's say, certain things, but offensively, how to make runs, when to make runs, um, you know, I, 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 when to play between the lines. I feel like uh, um, from watching watching certain players, certain games, it was really, really helpful to me. I'll tell you what, man, that, that last thing you just said about your movement is, it's such, it's something that just, it, at least here, I mean, I, I've played against some, you know, international teams that come on tour here or when I played uh, overseas in some tournaments, that was the biggest difference. I mean, you know, you, you'll you'll come across technical players all over the world, but the ones that, like, know where to move to get wide open, it, some, some of them, I mean, I always think of, like, Carlos Valderrama, who I felt like he never left the center circle. He was the, one never. of the best players in the world, and for some reason, nobody marked him. Like, how is this guy always open? And he was just smarter than everybody. He just knew where to go and where to move. And, and I'll tell you, speaking of famous players from you know a few years ago, did you play with with uh, Shevchenko? I mean, were you teammates? Did you play against him? I mean, what's what's his story? So Shevchenko was 1976. I won 1977. Right. So he had his own group. I had my own group. We did a couple scrimmages, um, but I the way the way was you know what I mean. I was I was with a uh, uh, so when we travel we travel 77 75 you know 76 70 78 so like that's wow. that's how the traveling groups were but we knew he was you know what I mean uh, he was not a big star at the time the crazy part he was he was not even the best striker on his team but at the younger age that's they incredible. had another kid who was really really good he uh, did something to his knee right at the age of 17 right when they were graduating, when they coming in and then Shava just took over. And then it's that, that's, uh, that was the part of it. Um, that he just, he just, it's the time and it's a crazy thing. It's about the time and tune and the great, you know, he got the opportunity and at age 18, he was dominating the Ukrainian league 19. That's crazy how it works. That's like here in America. It's the story of Tom Brady started like that. I mean, Tom Brady is, everybody thinks he's the greatest football player ever. And, yes. He is. Uh, Everybody forgets that Drew Bledsoe was number one overall pick in the draft yeah. and was the starting quarterback and had taken the team to the Super Bowl, you know, a, a few years before that. And uh, he gets knocked out of a game. Tom Brady's thrust in, and all of a sudden, he's you know seven Super Bowls later. We're we're talking I about mean, him. I mean, the greatest opportunities yeah. strikes, and you know, it's such a great lesson. It's like you better be ready. You just never know. We yeah. we can say it till we're blue in the face, but to have concrete examples like Shevchenko and Tom Brady, it's like. And obviously, we're talking on a college soccer level, a much different level, but it's it's the same idea. That that kid could go down if you've been assuming you're not ever going to play. Well, then there you go. You're you're not going to be prepared. You have to you you have to stay ready. That's for sure. And and but that's that that's where the mental part comes in with the kids. You know, it it, it is such a hard thing to sit on a bench and 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 be in that role, but. If you have right support, if, if the right communications happening to you and you get in proper, proper instructions and, and, you know, wait for your chance, some things can happen. Mm -hmm. I had I had over my now that I'm coaching since 2006, you know, we had guys who were not 
involved and then become in such integral part of the team that you were like, here is the example, you know, the continuous work, continuous getting ready. Um, you get an opportunity, you get in. So, yeah, it, it happens all the time. Talking about Tom Brady, I hate the guy because I'm a Bills fan, but <laughs> sure. he's uh, been destroying us for years. But the, the greatest for me, it's it's incredible, incredible. Right. But just again, again, it's it's mentality, you know. It, it, it it's what what it takes. The greatest to have this different type of craziness in the brain, where sets them apart. Oh yeah. As an aside. You know, everybody here is an American football fan. Everybody here is a, a football fan. Why? What's the difference in the fandom of a, a soccer team versus the fandom of an NFL team? I mean, is it because like the the, the clubs are in neighborhoods and people grow up with it and, and that sort of thing? I mean, I just feel like there's there's a different type of passion for for European well, not just European, but world soccer versus American football. Uh, what was your experience like as growing up, you know, being a fan of soccer overseas? In Europe, is like the only game is soccer. You know, that that that's that's one thing. We have basketball, we have a little bit of hockey, but the main thing is football. That's it. You play yeah. soccer, football, we call it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Everybody, it's it's just the, the government knows about it. You know what I mean. Every supports it. You know what I mean. Like uh, uh, in a Soviet society, you know, it's that's how it is. We put, you know what I mean. The, the, the sports were uh, the element of expressing the country in a in a, in a positive way, and the soccer was the biggest game. So it was. It was I don't know. It, it it is crazy. I mean, you go to a football game and you got a lot of people don't even pay attention. And so it's about go getting a, a proper beer or whatever it is. And MLS fans, some way like this, right? Still, still in the, in the same rhythm. You go into the game and you see, uh, let's say, Chicago plays, uh, uh, well, Charlotte, and then you got people wearing a Ronaldo jersey. You know, you're not gonna see that in Europe. You go into a Liverpool against Man City. That's gonna be th those are gonna be two colors. Is gonna be wearing. That. Ain't gonna be no other jersey. No national <laughs> team jersey. No any. I just feel like it's just it's just a passion craziness about about people out there here i think it's just the social events sometimes i mean i'm a i'm a i'm a big you know bills fan and whatnot but i'm you know i you know here it's about more of a pain in the faces um i don't know i, I feel like it's a tailgate is a big thing you know it, it, it we're in europe is just a game this is the most important thing we're going to the game people watching the game if you see it if you look at it like you know what i mean it's just a lot more people tune into it. but i really i don't know why it's i mean yeah. Um, geez, I see you making notes. You have stuff you want to ask? Yeah, I was I was checking out your roster and I was looking at your bio the other day and um, your, your roster is super interesting to me uh, to dive into the recruiting side of things. I, yeah. You're a state school. And so I'm assuming it's just like our state school. Your Illinois kids are going to be spending a lot less than a California kid. And so Correct. I look at your roster, and you have a ton. I mean, half your roster are kids from Illinois. Uh, you only have two or three out of state kids, and then the other half would be international. Um, you know, maybe looks looks like you have a few transfers, maybe some D two kids or something like that in AIA. Um, right. Can you kind of dive into that? I mean, what is your recruiting niche? What do you guys look for? Where are you sprinkling your money around? And you know, kind of what's your general theme on how to bring players in and fill your roster? So. Uh... We all involved in recruiting, but Minos, our, our order assistant, Minos Lamakis, is is incredible in, in as far as recruiting. The guy knows every player in in Chicago, and he is so spot on. It. I mean, as you know, you need to have players. You can be an unbelievable coach, but if you don't have players, you you, you ain't gonna win anything. Right. So Minos has been unbelievable as far as finding players from all over the world, um, but. In Chicago, what we do, Chicago have so many players. That's one thing about Chicago. You have so many, you have three academies, right? Which is, you know, uh, on any given year, they can win a national championship. So you have just from that alone, you have so many kids in just right. in the city of Chicago. Then you have such a, a high level of a, of a club football over here. There is a couple teams that we always look after in the summers and stuff like that. Um, Minos, because he knows he grew up here, he was raised in Chicago. He knew 
He knows every referee, every 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 uh, high school coach. You know what I mean? So his phone ringing anytime there is something special comes around. So we like our Chicago kids. We like our um, our our bread. You know what I mean? Right here, what we have here, and that's why we don't really recruit outside of Chicago too much, as far as American American kids. You know, because we have plenty yeah. of them here. Also, in the importance for us is just to know the character of the kid. He can be special, but if that uh, character is not right, and sometimes if you're recruiting a kid out of state, you might not get to know him. Here, you know, the kid can come to your games. You know, we can have conversation left and right. Uh, we can we can talk to their coaches because we do have a better better relationship with with let's say coaches and stuff like that. So, right. um, for us, character is is a big thing because. As much as uh, we look for the footballers, we also look for the guys who are are a good apples. You know what I mean? Who's not gonna uh, kill the locker room? And and um, so Chicago is 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 a prime because, like I said, we have a lot of kids that can play football in this in this in this uh, city, but also we get to know them on a personal level, and then we get the foreign because it's it's the way to get a couple special players. Um, and as you know, nowadays, portal is crazy. Oh, yeah. Portal changed the recruiting. <laughs> I mean, we get uh, probably 30 emails a day, you know, as a college coaches with different guys and the guys going on the portal and and uh, um, and a lot of them foreign going in and portal, you know what I mean? So that, that's that's our auto part, going to uh, this uh, big showcase, showcases in Europe and then portal, so. Um, that's how we've been operating as far as our recruiting. But like I said, uh, Minos has done a great job as far as finding out all that, what needs to be done to bring the kid here. Uh, you know, you, you highlighted the Chicago kids and you, I mean, you're right. There's a ton of talent in that area. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the college schools, I mean, your D3 landscape is, I mean, North Park yeah. has, uh, yeah. I mean, they're an incredible program. Chicago just won it. And uh, yes. National title and University of uh, Central is up and coming. They've won a bunch of games this oh, year. So yeah. You know, and not all those kids are from Chicago, but just the, you know, the, you know, the Chicago soccer in general, is such a high level. And it is. Uh, it's interesting what you said about the local kids. And it's such a true thing. I mean, you know, here at CNU, we're, we're a state school. We don't have the, the scholarship stuff. So I'm not, you know, pulling kids right. from all over the world to bring them in for, you know, a good scholarship. But, I, I have to do well in Virginia and specifically I want to do well locally. You know, if there's a great kid locally, I want him. And there's like an extra sense of pride. I mean, a lot of these kids, I mean, this year I'm bringing in four kids at, you know, five, if you include the kid that moved away uh, later in his high school life that grew up around here. I mean, they already had senior soccer shirts from the, right. you know, being right. kids. And, you know, so there's that sense of pride and uh, you know, you bring in these Chicago kids and uh, I know that Chicago, People are very proud of their city, and uh, you guys got good sports there. Uh, a little, little down now as a Bears fan. I'm a little, right. a little That's worried. It. Blackhawks fan, a little worried, but you know they're, they're up and coming. They they love their sports teams, and uh, you know they, you you need that. You need that extra sense. You need that extra that extra push. I mean, that kid's gonna put on a jersey that says Chicago on it. He's gonna be like, all right, you know, this is yeah. my town. I love this place, and uh, you're gonna get that little extra nudge out of them. Some of the best teams we ever had at CNU. We were littered with kids that were local that had been to our youth camps yeah. as little kids, and they had senior soccer shirts as like an eight year old. I mean, those there's a sense of pride. It really it's it it goes a long way, and it it does influence our recruiting absolutely. And and they do want to be there. That that's another thing. One thing about Chicago because we have um a lot of first first uh, generation kids coming to college, so. I love uh, a Latino population here, you know, and they like to stay home. They like to stay closer to the to the family. So, mm -hmm. for the longest time, we had a lot of a lot of kids in in that in that um, kind of a status that they would come to us. Um, they wanted to be home. They want to be closer, but they also want to experience proper football. Which, which if anybody watch us play, we're trying to do the things the. You know the right way i don't know what the right way is you know i guess it's winning is the right way but mm -hmm. we're trying to play we're trying to play we're trying to make sure the kids enjoy enjoying the game while working on winning every day so we're trying to have that balance um plus we have an unbelievable stadium i mean we just had chelsea and dortmund coming in training with us last couple of days they wow. were in town um 
any team that comes in town that the U.S. was training before the Gold Cup, before their match. So our stadium and our grass pitch is, is top, top level. So um, local kids do want to stay because of that environment. Uh, we have three colleges here in this, four colleges now, Chicago State. Uh, we have Loyola, we have DePaul and Northwestern. You know, we're the only grass field with the, with the proper grass field. We're not talking about grass field that youth plays. You know what I mean? If you ask a kid now, what do you want to play, turf or, or grass? They'll say some of them, oh, we're playing turf. Then they come and see our grass and they be like, no, that, that's a proper grass. grass. All that's the time. A, that's a golf course. You know what yeah. I mean? So let's, so that, that help us out as far as, as far as keeping some top, 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 um, Chicago kids in the area. Yeah. Uh, so, so we're, we're, you know, we're about to kick off in the preseason. I know you guys, uh, I'm yeah. sure our new kids are already in, in, in town and moved in and, you know, whether you're, I don't know if you're, what your date is to start, but I know your boys are already getting together and working Monday. out. And Monday, yeah. Going and being around each other. So I, I want to ask you, and this is uh, a little selfish on my end because maybe I can learn some things as well, but, you know, tell me, you know, first, how do you evaluate day one, day two early on? I mean, I've, I've heard of coaches saying, oh, the first day all we do is play because I want to see where everybody is and I want to start kind of funneling everything in to what I want to build from there. And they want to start evaluating. You got a lot of young kids, maybe a bunch of new players. I need to see where we stand. But you also see a lot of coaches that'll say, no, we need to start teaching who we are first and then seeing how they do inside that system before we start the evaluating evaluation process. So, you know, why don't you kind of talk about your first two or three days in the preseason, what that looks like, maybe some fitness stuff going on in there. You know, tell me, tell me what that looks like and, you know, what a kid can expect at your level. So, Number one, you guys had David on, 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 on a podcast. He is the biggest, the biggest difference maker for us is going to be this year. Reason why. As you know, preseason is very short. Within 10 days, you have a first regular season game. Yep. If the kids comes in unfit, you are behind no matter what you do with the kids. Yep. You are prone to get a lot of injuries. You got... You got. You want to work on, uh, on, on, and you want to put physical work into them. You can't do it because they're not at that level. Um, so David, for the last three weeks, we he's he's been. It's a voluntary workout, but like I said, we're talking about committed kids. Our our captains organize it where they come in and they are working out with him every day. You know, Monday through Friday, they weekends off. Whatever they show up, obviously we cannot monitor, but David is a strength and conditioning coach. He can prepare them as far as that. So in the past, what we have done it, this is going to be, um, uh, you know, this way it's going to be the first year. So um, we have in the past, we've done uh, a first day would have been a uh, some kind of a running test just to see where they are as far as the physical, where they are as far as a, um, you know, what their condition is. But for me in those tests, it's not necessary condition. What I look at those tests is, is, is yeah, condition one thing, but the guts is another one. You know what I mean? What for me is important is, is, is a kid dropping off. Let's say we have a beep test and, and let's say we have a level 90, they got to get to, is he going to drop up at nine as soon as he hit it, or is he going to push himself until he's completely gone? For me, that's, that's, that's what I'm looking at those type of, if you're doing a running test. All right. And then right away, we're trying to prepare it, the kids for how we're going to play. Because um, uh, as we're talking about, the preseason is so short. The kids need to understand which way we're going to be playing. We got to identify if is it going to be, um, because in the past we have done 3-5-2, 4-3-3. You know what I mean? We have to identify the players that is going to be playing in those roles. Yep. And then kind of stick with that and trying to educate him, educate him on which way we're going to be going. But we also don't mind to uh, give them education as far as couple different different ways of play. Um, just in case, right? Tactically, you can change it. Uh, depends on the opponent or depends on the, what the result in the game is. You know what I mean? If it's a 70 minute, do you go a little bit more? Uh, offensive when you need the goal, you know what I mean? Or you, you know, maybe bring some in if you're AD and you're trying to hold on to the lead. So we're trying to educate guys as far as uh, what, what, what is the tactical adjustments could be. 
because I think it's big now. Now nowadays is when I grew up, tactics were uh, pretty simple. There was two tactics: four four two, flat four four two, or three five two. Nowadays, you know, you got you got diamond, you got you know, you got three five two, you got four three three, four five one, whatever you want. Two pivots, one pivot. You know what I mean? It 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 is it is so many different ways you can play. So we're trying to identify what is the best for this group because um, we bring in 13 new guys. So first couple of days, we got to see who actually can do a job for us. Yeah. We had five guys coming in in the spring, which we know. But again, they were not in a, in a really, really, you know, in the preseason mode. And now we bring in eight more guys. So 13 new players, we need to figure out what would be the best way for us to play. We have certain views on it. We already, as a coaching staff, we talked about it. Um, how maybe a couple different um, tactical ways we want to play. But again, until we see them in the first couple of days, until we identify, well, this kid, maybe we thought maybe can play, but when he's with us, he's a little bit different. You know what I mean? So it, it is, it is putting them together. It's the first week is we could adjust. We have first couple of days, maybe line up, but then after that, there may be a little bit of adjustment on how we're doing as far as where we at is, 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 as a group, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. I know okay. there is a lot of coaches, they have their ways and they want it too, but I feel like if you have one or two injuries and you have an unbelievable left back, you know what I mean, and he's uh, pull his hamstring, you might have to change tactically for that. Maybe okay. he's, now they maybe instead of four in the back, you're going three in the back and you got, you know what I mean? So you, you first couple of days, we're going to identify that and then trying to apply the tactical so before our first uh, preseason game, we have understanding of how we want to play. Yeah, I'm glad you uh, you know you, you you highlighted the strength and conditioning aspect. I mean, oh, it's big. One of the things I noticed about my guys, uh, you know, I think we have an incredible program here, and our our head our coach that works with our players um, does a, a, an amazing job. And I kind of giggled this year. I looked at our guys in our spring game. Uh, we only really get one in Division Three, one specific game we do we highlight scrimmages through mm -hmm. uh our training sessions but one game we're playing with William and Mary and I'm looking at my freshmen and it made me giggle how different they looked in you know an April scrimmage versus what they looked like when they checked in in August uh just a mm -hmm. few months earlier I mean I've had a lot of parents say to me you know what'd you do to my kid you know and it's it's a yeah, yeah. question you know they, they look different they you all of a sudden you're noticing them in the locker room like taking the shirt off a little bit more and flexing a little bit more in the mirror because they got muscles that they never had before. But I mean, talk about how important that is. I mean, these kids come in and they are 18 year old high school kids that, you know, didn't do the diet, didn't work out like this, you know, like they would in college. And they're playing against, especially in your world, transfers from division two and AIA, other division one programs. They're playing against men that have gone yeah. through this before and they are so far ahead of these incoming freshmen. And it, it's, it's even the same way for us without, you know, the, the high intensity, you know, the high intense look at these transfers or the international kids. And so if it's a big gap between just domestic American kids, I mean, talk about at your level in Division One with international influence on your roster, how important it is for a kid or maybe even what is your messaging to an Illinois in-state kid who's just been playing, you know, even at a high academy level, doesn't matter. They're coming in and they're going to be way behind unless yeah. they listen to this message from you. I mean, what do you think it is? What's the best thing for these kids to do before they check in? So to be, to be honest, uh, the way, the way it works with us, you know, as soon as the kid graduate, uh, they can have a physical with our, um, uh, with our uh, athletic trainer, they get mm -hmm. their physical and, they can start coming in at this captain's voluntary workout. And the way we do, we know we, as soon as the kid is graduated from school, we give the phone number to a couple of the captains. Mm -hmm. And now it's it's based on our captains and the guys because we can monitor anything, right? It's NCAA, right. we cannot do it. So it's all about the kids trying to, because they understand also if I'm an upperclassman, I'm going to need my freshman to be ready to go. So they bring them in on board by themselves and they are, uh, whatever they do out there, I know David can work with them and he's done an incredible job with these guys. I mean, our yeah. players, I mean, they'll pop in in the office and they love the guy, you know what I mean? Because he's not just uh, uh, provide them workouts, he's get after them. 
you know, he lets them know exactly what importance of, of the strength and condition and how important is it to develop certain, you know, base, you know what I mean? To be able to be faster, be, 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 be quicker and all that stuff. Right. And he doesn't just train them, you know, to be a big, he's trained them to be a proper soccer player. So if they understand this part and they see that, okay, yeah, I need this, then it's, then it's like I said, also, you have to have a great character of the kid. That's why it's so important for us to get great, great kids with a great character. So they can understand that it's not just uh, being a technical on the ball. It's actually a uh, proper diet, proper, proper, um, proper fitness level. For me, is this. I always tell the player, if you're not playing because of your fitness level, you're not a disciplined kid. You're not a proper kid. You, you should not be involved in this, into, mm. into Division One soccer player. You shouldn't. You playing, you're not playing because of a coach's decision. It's a one thing. But because you are struggling, because you cannot run for more than 20 minutes, that that is a poor excuse to me. And maybe you have to look somewhere else. Um, as long as the kids can understand it, then 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 we'll we'll have a great understanding as a, as, as a program. How are you determining, you know, in the recruiting process, who has that mindset, who's got who possesses the discipline and and all of that? Well, you watch the games, right? You watch the games. And that's why I was saying, like, a lot of our American kids are the local kids. Yeah. You watch, you like the kid, you see, wow, this kid can do things on the field. I think he can fit us, you know what I mean? This, let's say, right back, he's up and down, he's box to box, he providing assist, he could defend 1v1. Okay, this kid is fit for program. Number one, you identify him as a soccer player. Second thing, you start com conversation with them. You know, there is a conversation between him. You bring him on campus, you meet the family, you meet their, you know what I mean, whoever they bring siblings, whatnot, talking to their coach and continuous con conversations. And there is a couple kids that we really like. And then after conversation, we would come to the office and we said, you know what, he's a good kid, but I don't know if he's gonna, if he's gonna fill the mold of the team. I don't know if he's a character that we're looking for. So it's it's nonstop. Do we hit everything 100%? No, obviously you're gonna make some, some kids will come in and then you might, you might think, okay, we made a mistake on this kid, that are gonna happen. But for most of the parts, we bring the kids that are, are because we are, we done their homework on it. And like I said, our, our guy, Minos, he's, he's with these kids. He's, he's a technology guy. He sleeps with the phone, you know, so he's with them in constant communication. You know, right. he knows when they have the games. He'll call them, congratulate them, see how they react after a loss, see how they react after the win. He watches, watches the game. If I watch the game, I'll see if the kid comes out, how he comes off the field, how he's on the bench. You know, you're trying to look for the cues that, that you know what I mean, might my, my, my send you the right way or send you like, okay, no, nah, no, nah, maybe we, we pushed away from this kid. Let him go somewhere else. Um, so I guess that's how we do it. So let's go back a little bit to your background. Um, <laughs> you're getting to uh, talking about Indiana and you know, maybe talk a little bit about your college experience and the way you were treated um, and you know, we were just talking about how college players are treated now. I yeah. mean, how were you treated? You came into a, a big time program. Um, so yeah, maybe just kind of talk about that experience so, a little bit. Ten of us Ukrainians came to 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 uh, Rochester area, and then all of us went to a pretty good Division One school. Everybody, we were recruited pretty heavily, especially East Coast, and three of us went to Indiana University. Three of us, uh, all three of us, end up going professional play a little bit in America. Um, so why the reason I went to Indiana? Um, I had a lot of coaches coming in and I would sit on, you know, come to the house, sit on the couch um, into, or I would go to the visits and, you know, it was a lot of this stuff, you know, you the main guy, you are the, um, you know, this is going to be this for you, this, 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 and almost like over, over, I guess in my mindset, I just needed to hear, I need a chance. When I went to Indiana, what the coaches are telling me said, listen, this is what I picture you playing. I totally want you to understand that if you are coming the way we see you, you're going to be this guy right here, but there is no promises. Mm -hmm. You come in, you got to earn, you got to, you got to do everything is expectation of this program. You know what I mean? We want you to be here. We're not looking at a lot of players. We want you to be here, but you need to be, um, and, and for me, that was bigger than say, you know what, you're going to come in and you're going to, this is your spot. This is yours. This is yours. I didn't want to hear that. 
I want to hear that, okay, that means to me, every player who's coming through the program, they have to earn the spot, which means a competition, which means it's environment every day that is, okay, all right, it's not going to be easy today. Today is going to be hard. Training is going to be so hard that it's, it's, I'm going to be, games are going to be the easiest part of it. And that was mentality in, in Indiana. We, we had a great coaching staff. Um, you know, the guys were unbelievable. My teammates were great. Uh, the whole experience support staff was awesome, you know, from academics to, to, um, to, you know, uh, uh, strength conditioning coaches to, uh, uh, athletic train. Everybody were on the same page. You know what I mean? The support system was so together. Um, uh, it's, it was hard, you know what I mean? Hard, hard to disappoint them, you know, in, in a sense of like, you know, there was so much commitment to that. Uh, coaches hold each other, hold us accountable every day. I mean, that was some of the hardest training session. And in those days, you know, the language was a little bit more rougher. You know what I mean? It was more straight up. Um, they let you know, it was, was, you know, remind me a little bit of Ukraine as far as how we were treated as far as when you lose, you know what I mean? There were people who were not smiling. There were people would not talking to you. It was about the next day of work. Um. The biggest development for me was in Indiana is is the defensive side of the game. The defensive, um, as as a front runner, I learned quite a bit is how you are, is how you press the ball, how you are winning balls higher up the field, uh, giving your team chances a little bit higher. You know, you don't have to build throughout 15 passes to score a goal. You know what I mean? For me, it was understanding of you work hard on this part, and then you always I always thought about if I work so hard, I'm not gonna have any legs uh on offensive side well more conditioning kid get on the freaking track shoes and freaking go because you need to do that now you win in a ball 45 yards away from the from the goal instead of you know trying to break down the defense all the time so for me that was that was big 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 thing you know um because they were really really hard all the all the all the all the coaching all the guys were really really tough as far as you know understanding that it is complete team. There is nobody playing offense. Everybody plays defense. Everybody plays offense. We are total, total team as far as that goes. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was hard maybe my first first couple months to because I was a little bit of a uh, just just a goal scorer at the time. But in Indiana, it became complete package. Yeah. Um, um, you feel like uh, Indiana was a little bit ahead of its time at that point. Um, you know, you guys won two national championships and you were, you know, in the playoffs all in the tournament all the time. Um, so do you feel like it kind of set the standard for programs going forward after that? So they won in, they won in the eighties and, uh, when yeah. they brought us, you know, <laughs> I don't know if they put pressure on us, but there was always talk about national championship, mm -hmm. national champ, Ukrainians, you're a little bit more creative. They kind of, they kind of. We brought a little bit of a creativity, a little bit of a different, different spice to the program where they were more, more of a, you know, hard blue collar team. Now you add three Ukrainians and they added a Serbian kid who was really, really special. Laz Olavani, he was also, was really, really special kid. Um, so you read, you, you brought a couple guys who can change the game as far as an offensive side. Um, so the expectation was to win a national championship. Every year there was a talk. And what happened to them in the 90s, obviously, Virginia dominated. And then uh, in 94, I believe, to last in Virginia, to last to Virginia in the final game. So that was always talked about, it, you know what I mean? And uh, when we Ukrainians came in, we, we wanted to change that. We really, really wanted to, uh, I mean, we, we, we talk about national championship all the time, you know. But we live by that. That's that's the thing. Every day, we, uh, we were not just talking about We We were at it every day, you know what I mean? amount of of uh, individual training sessions we put outside of a hard training session that we did with the full coaching staff is is incredible you know you're trying to tell the kids nowadays this is what it takes you know what i mean but nobody's looking where nobody that's what you do the work i think we did quite a bit of that maybe because we had a mind of it, not just winning the national championship what's after that can we go professional after that can we do that? You know, we didn't really talk about when you were in Indiana because was all concentration was let's win a national championship and everything was going to come after. You just showcase you're this way. You know what I mean? Things will come. You put up the proper numbers. 
people will look at you um so yeah indiana was it, it was great for me as far as as far as development into it i you know obviously i came in very skinny they put a proper proper program in me as far as gaining the strength um i think that was that was a big 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 understanding because even growing up in ukraine obviously i was young we did a lot of gymnastics we did a lot of uh, flexibility work you know as far as to be you know get up at the ground really quick you know what i mean that type of stuff you know so gymnastic a uh, little bit of dancing that was that was that was helpful for us where in indiana was strength and conditioning developing your core was was big thing and i think helped me quite a bit to hold my ground against big 10 at that time was really really physical physical it's like uh the big boys you know they would kick you all the time so you had to be able to fight them through um so yeah in that sense they are developed me uh, to get to get an opportunity for me for the next level yeah, yeah. indiana still has that reputation today i mean they're in the final yeah. four yeah. again and uh you know to be the final four in division one's an amazing thing but they didn't win it and so i'm sure they're sitting there like well, that wasn't good enough you know it's yeah, just uh, it is the yeah. message is to put a star that's the thing mm -hmm. that the message is to for every player they recruit ever since i was there i was there for a coach for a year also it's about it's not about uh, looking pretty it's not about uh winning a, a big 10 title it's winning a big thing and um you know that's that's the, how the kids were wired when i was there um what uh when you guys i mean i'm sure you do alumni events you know, when you guys all get together, whatever it is, and we do golf tournaments or we'll go to weddings or whatever, you know, there are now guys that have had a national championship. They put the star on their on their on their chest. But what's what's it like for the players that didn't that went there four years, didn't put one on there? I mean, what 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 are those guys thinking? I mean, are they like, man, I, even though I played well or whatever, we won some conference tournaments, something like that. But I didn't win the big one. Is there like a I feel like something's missing there. You know, is there some no. sort of like. Yeah. I, I'm not sure, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You're not sure because you won too, you know. I don't know we we did, we did win, you know, so um, I'm, I'm sure they felt they felt a little bit down, to be honest with you, because that was yeah. the mentality. Um, you know, I probably don't help them because I'll I'll knock them on their back and I said, guys, unlucky. Yeah. You know, had to be a little bit better, maybe spend a little bit more time with the ball. <laughs> maybe work a little bit more on a game but uh, you know I'm a, I'm a little bit of a jokester when it comes to that stuff sure. uh, if I was on the other side yeah I'd probably freaking be kicking people but you know you can't win it every year not every team's gonna win it so that okay. has to be understanding too you know what I mean so it, it's a, it's a tough thing to do there is a lot of things gotta go your way um to win to win I mean Look at look yeah. at like Argentina when I'm looking at this year, three penalty kick shootouts to win a World Cup. You know what I mean? Things yeah. gotta go your way. You know what I mean? You sure. gotta get a little bit of lucky. You gotta catch a breaks. Um, you gotta get that. Um, so, I mean, just to just for that program, just to be in a conversation every year is is a is a mm -hmm. is a pretty significant thing. You know, um, the winning is uh, the winning is college soccer coach of all time, the Division three guy, Jay Jay Martin out of Ohio yeah. West still coaching i mean yeah my god the guy is uh he's an awesome man too but he's won two national titles and he was asked you know like i mean he's had some amazing teams like they could have won 10 and yeah. uh he was asked you know like well, what what happened why did those teams win the other other teams didn't he's hit luck his answer was luck i mean he had a few bounces go his way one here and one there and a team That's got right. knocked out that had their number and you know it just he goes, we just had a few things go our way. I mean, he didn't say that those were his two best teams of all time. He just says those are the two teams that picked up the right bounces and and finished it off. I mean, it's soccer. It's I agree. The, the games are so low scoring and championships are won at a zero zero score line. I mean, it's inches, it's, inches. Oh, it's, it's crazy. The smallest. I mean, I, 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 I'm, I can tell you about my. I mean, it's just uh, I a hundred percent agree. Luck. I used to. I used to, they would interview me in college and everything they would say, how did you score the goal? I would say I got lucky. And honestly, I didn't want to answer a question, you know what I mean? But I would I would just kind of go on with that. They, they, used, mm -hmm. they had an article for me, lucky 13. So that's how I was. I was number 13. I would just say lucky, you know, I love that stuff. Obviously, you create your own luck. That's that's how I feel like because you work sure. so hard, the breaks are going to come your way. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, our first national championship, we won there. Our first round, we barely got out of first round. 
That's yeah. that's how close the game was. We come in, was over. Uh, Akron comes in, they they hit the crossbar. Ball get dropped. We pick it up. We go opposite way. We get a game winner. First round. That's how close yeah. the game was. I mean, yeah. they scored that. The game's over. We are out of the first round. And then after that, you know, we just kind of picked it up. And and when we got actually to the final four, it was the easiest thing. We destroyed everything. Nobody can come yeah. close. But the, there is a certain amount of luck. I mean, think about inches, right? We're talking about crossbar. I yeah. mean, it goes under it again. That's it. We're crying and we are talking about failures. And, and we're talking about one of those guys that you mentioned not winning the championship. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like our best team in 97, we went 23 and all. And we lost in the national semifinal game. Yeah. To the UCLA that we are destroyed completely. But I was at that game. You were at 97? I was, I was so at that. It was in Richmond, right? It was in Virginia? In Richmond, in- I, I remember yeah. I had a sitter from six yards out. Yeah. I would score 99 out of 100, I swear. Mm-hmm. I, that that shot, I, I that this is, ball came in right on my right foot, inside of the foot, I'm placing a side net. Before I shoot, Matt Reeves, he's already diving in there. He just took a gamble. Yeah. Picks it up, gets up. Not today. <laughs> yeah. And it's just one of those games. We pepper them, whatever it is, the best team. I would trade two of my national championship for that one. Because yeah. if you would have won it, we would have won 25 and no, nobody done it. No ties, no, no, nothing, you know. And we were so damn good. Our team was, I mean, we were just. Yeah, I we remember so that game. Good. I remember watching that game and saying to myself, I can't believe Indiana's not already up 2 3 nothing right now. Yeah. That was a good UCLA team. But it I was mean, unbelievable it, UCLA team. You got Romando was, and Reese as a goalkeepers, yeah. two freaking guys. Was that the was FIU on the other side? Were they the one that got to the, the final? No, Virginia. Virginia was on notice. So Virginia and Maryland. I believe Virginia uh, and Virginia and Maryland. FIU, maybe FIU was the 98 one. I remember FIU like surprised everybody got to the final. Uh, maybe the 95, final. 95. 95 oh, FIU. Okay. Gotcha. And, and, gotcha. And, no, 96. 96 was FIU because I was recruited FIU. And I remember we lost to them in the quarterfinals. And they went to, uh, ah, they went to the cool. final four. And uh, I was actually down. I was thinking, made, did I make a right decision college-wise? Should I yeah. win there? Should I, you know what I mean? Like that kind of crossed my mind. And, you know, just, you know weather. just lost. <laughs> and they were in that that year. Who won it? I think Duke or St. John's. That yeah, was I'm Duke, St. John's, sure. and I think FIU. And so it was. A... Yeah. I went to every one of those. Like we, it was like four or five years in a row. Richmond, you know, like City Stadium in Richmond hosted the. That final. was awesome. That setup was, was awesome. What a cool thing! And we were kids. I was a high school kid or a middle school going into high school, yeah. and I like my dad was like, all right, let's go. We, we'd only go to the final four. We went because it was always that day off. And then you guys would play on the Sunday or the Monday yeah. or whatever it was. We would always go down and watch both college soccer games. It was cold and terrible, but it was awesome. In fact, cool I mean, 16, yeah. 17,000, you know, 18,000 yep. pack house. Cool. You know what I mean? You look like it. There is a crowd. You know what I mean? It, it was awesome. Yeah. It was great yeah. experience. Great cool. Event. It's cool to play in there. We actually do, we do scrimmages in there uh, in our preseason. We'll we'll play a lot of games in that bowl, and it's just in a bowl, yeah. It's beautiful. I mean, it's a cool, it's a cool thing. It's a cool venue. That was great. That was great. I loved it out there. My my last year, we went to um, Charlotte, and we played in a hundred thousand seat stadium where we had eighteen thousand and looks empty, you know. Yeah. With the football lines, and um, I mean, right. they made it, and I I really. Uh, Richmond was awesome just because it was a closed-in environment. You got fans; they right on top of you, right. and uh, made it made a good good event. Um, good grass field too. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. yeah, yeah. It was good. So yeah. it's cool. Um, geez, yeah. you have to drop off. Uh, I got a couple more minutes. If you have one okay. more, you have, yeah, yeah. I mean, let's talk about uh, getting drafted and what that was like, and and uh, you know where that took you. So. I mean, my numbers were pretty good in college, so I had a, you know, I was uh, was pretty much in contact with uh, with 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 people who are, you know, I was getting calls from agents who wants to uh, go places, and uh, even at that time, um, I got called from Shakhtar Donetsk. I don't know if you guys uh, yeah. are familiar, which is now is a top team in Ukraine. They kind of overpassed Dynamo because they have a owner who has a lot of money. Hmm. So I got called in, in that in that my senior year, and and um, they were asking me if I want to come to Ukraine, and I was scared, 
to be honest with you, I became a little bit more American. I want to stay here. And uh, the reason I didn't go really because I did not have a uh, green card at that time. So if I would not make it, I would be left back in Ukraine and then would be a hard time to come back. Which MLS was uh, promising me at the time is 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 uh, when they drafted me was number one thing is to get my green card to make sure I'm staying here. Um, drafted, uh, I don't know, went to the draft and got picked. That That's how I look at this thing. But, uh, you know, all my work was done in college. So I put myself in a situation to be in that, in that, uh, to be one of those picks. Um, so, I mean, not much. My, my career did not last as much as I wanted. That that was one little bit disappointment because I um, I did injure it. Uh, my first year was pretty healthy. Well, quite a bit of an appearance for a rookie, you know, put, put a couple goals, you know, uh, had assists, had some impactful games. And then in the second season, got a um, new coach came in and uh, the guy who actually drafted all of us. Uh, kind of changed things. That's how it works in the game of football, right? You got coach, you got... You got your players, whatnot. Um, I was not the easiest person to deal with also. Yeah. Had a little bit of a, not hot-headed, but, you know, was I worked for that to be in a hot-head. That's, that's how I, I, I put it to the kids nowadays. You know what I mean? I was a difficult person to, uh, to coach, but, uh, you know, I worked for it. You know what I mean? Like uh, I would be on a training ground proving myself to that. So I got traded into after my second year, I got traded to uh, Chicago, which I had a pretty, pretty significant injury. Uh, playing in preseason in Portugal, we played Porto. I got uh, knee hurt, and then after that, my career never was the same. I never mm-hmm. recovered. I recovered. I got I got released from MLS, and uh, they would sign me and they loaned me to every A League team until I got my uh, my my uh, green card, which they did stick with what they promised me, getting me green card by uh, keeping that keeping the sponsorship for for until the moment I got my green card. So. Uh, which was my professional career longer and whatnot, because that's all I was dream of, you know. Um, but again, you got to stay healthy in this game. After the knee surgery, I was never the same. I mean, that followed by triple hernia a couple of years later. And, you know, the body broke down. I mean, if I had probably people with nutritionists and everything else, the way they are clubs are now, I'd probably be in a different, different situation. Uh, because even at that time, MLS... We would have strength and conditioning coach, but it was voluntary to go and see him in the gym, you know, uh, which I did a couple of times. You, you would have a, not a, have a necessarily a proper um, a training training grounds, which the, every team has now. Uh, they have meals, they have breakfast, they have everything. It was At that time, you know, league was pretty young. We would do a lot of this stuff on your own, which I would not change it. I loved it. I loved my uh, my experience. I loved my, my teammates, you know. Um, so, yeah. Uh, that's just how it was, you know, in the first couple of years of the league. Now you look at this, this guy's got training facilities. They got breakfast, they got lunch, they got dinner if they want it. You know, you have freaking masseuses every day. You got, you, you name it. This guy's got, they, they got it. They, You know, even homegrown kids making decent money. We were playing mm-hmm. for, for the love at that time. You know, we were not making a lot unless you were a, a big time signings in, or unless you have in your contract in a couple of years that you start making money. But you know, that, that's how MLS was at the time. but And it was right. hard to make it at the time also. We only had 10 teams, so the, the volume of players was not was not as big. If You have to be pretty pretty good player to uh, to be on the roster at that time. Sure. So, you know, um, again, I wish it was a little bit longer, but it, the way it goes sometimes, you know? Yeah. So. And me, me too. I, I wish my pro career lasted uh, long. I, I got a nasty blister right before the draft, and uh, <laughs> the red flag. Well, those could be painful, you know, if you've got a blood deep ones. You know, I right. mean, I had a couple of those. You know, you have to sit out a couple games. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, Alexi, um, you talked about being difficult to deal with. You know, as a player, um, you think that's kind of essential for for a good goal scorer to be a little bit. I don't know, Ronaldo-esque, so to speak, you know, just, I mean, that's obviously the most famous one that is a little bit uh, difficult. Yeah, it, you know, it, it's not just for a goal scorer. I feel like there is people in different roles, you know, you have to, I, I can't, it's just, uh, I don't know, the character, you know what I mean? I did not, I was a poor loser. I mean, I'm sorry, but I was terrible in losing. I mean, I, even, even when I start coaching, I stopped coaching when I become very slow. I stopped training with the guys when I become very slow, much slower. 
because I would start bleeding people and I start kicking people because if the other team was winning, I had no level of saying, <laughs> okay, this, you are coach now. No, I'm, I'm training. I'm going to, you know what I mean? And that's how I was a player. I was, you know, it was just a, if I lost, I would not talk. Like my, my, my American family, I remember coming to the games and they were praying that the team won number one. And they were praying that I would score a goal. Otherwise, would game on Friday and Saturday because at college at that time you play back to back days or or Friday and Sunday. If we do not get a result on Friday, they would not see me till Sunday. Mm-hmm. I would just not talk to them. I, I said I'm disaster. Don't talk. You know what I mean? I'm gonna be. Uh, I'm angry. I'm angry. I'm in this. I'm in a state of mind that I need to be ready for Sunday. I'm angry. I gotta get myself. And, and that's as far as I was difficult. But then it's that just how I was. That just how I was raised. You know that. The winning was a, such a like a drug to me that there was, uh, I mean, I affected people, loved ones, you know what I mean? And and it's sometimes like, yeah, I was an asshole because of that. But they understood. If the people understood that and they see why you made it, why they probably want some certain things that, that uh, because we did have that chip. I mean, coach Jerry Yegley is probably one of the greatest coaches in college environment. He, he one day he was trying to play me out of position. Not out of position. He wanted to put the best players on the field. And instead of playing me up top, he put me as a wide midfielder. And we played in three five two systems. And at that time, I just said, you know, in my mind, I played it. I give the team everything I get, but I was not happy. I was not happy. He came in and said, shook my hand and said, oh, I look at you. You can do this job. And I, 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 I was pissed because <laughs> I wanted that. You know what I mean? And I said to him, you can play me. I'll do the job. But I'm the best forward you have on this team. Mm. I'm the best forward. Season started, he played me up top and whatnot. We go through the, you know, my, you know, uh, that was my junior year because he did. We had another, we had three guys up top that could do the job and he wanted all squeezes, all of us in, in the lineup. And then uh, he actually, after we graduated, we sit down and talk and he said, you know what, you know what, what do I know? You know, look at you, I'm trying to play you there and you end up banning all these goals for me you know what i mean at the at the most important times so he is even that you know what I mean? but you know i think it's a coach he loved it mm-hmm. i think he loved it he might not like the way i said it maybe what not but when he got home he's like fucking i know i know you know what i mean because mm-hmm. you know i he loved he was like that he was you know what i mean where he, where, where where you know he's he's you know he was disciplinary you know he was when he talked everything stopped you know what I mean? He was very motivational, you know? Yeah. Uh, everybody on the staff, you know, John Trask and Mike Freitag, they were all really good. Even Ernie was the goalkeeper coach. They were all good as far as what the roles are. You know what I mean? They were demanding as far as that. But so as difficult as that, yeah, I was telling somebody just recently that story. That's why it was on my mind that, you know, I don't know if I want to coach somebody like me or my friend Dima Kovalenko or Yuri Lavrinenko. Those three guys, we were, we were difficult. We were difficult, you know what I mean, as far as, uh, as far as to deal with. But we did the job on the field, and we did yeah. the job in training. We did the job um, individually, you know what I mean. So, like, uh, if I said something like this, I have something because I was I have a backing of it. You know what I mean. We have yeah. some guys will come to the office and ask for a playing time, and I said, okay, keep working on this and this. They'll do it for the next couple of days, and that they'll disappear. Mm-hmm. They think, okay, oh, I showed it to you, I did it. You know, well, that's not how it works. Right. But things maybe take months, then, but they might maybe, maybe take a little bit of development, you know. And those of them who stick with that, and I had said, see that we had some guys that continue coming. What I need to do, you apply, you apply. The guy keep working, keep working, and then next thing you know, wow, he's our best player. Why? Yeah. Because he are stuck with the what was messaged to him, and he actually worked on it. Yeah. So that's. Yeah, I imagine just the way you approach things and the attitude you had raised the level of, I mean, obviously I wasn't there, but it raised, you know, everyone else felt it and felt like they had to match that. that Nobody wanted to be in the locker room after we won because we would talk so much trash. I say that. <laughs> but there was, right. there was a mount. Let's yeah. say we were three roommates. We were in our, our second year. We were all Ukrainians lived together. I mean, if I was on the opposite team, like let's say D my Navi we were very close at that time. If me lost to him or opposite, there is one of us doesn't talk. 
pissed off and you know the other ones antagonizing. <laughs> Have a great yeah. night tonight, kid. You know, and that type of stuff. Then we will yeah. go home, we we'll play cards, and that's the same thing over. Whoever we'll <laughs> lost will just freaking in the mind. It was not just a game, it was a losing in, in the freaking rocks, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So Well, um, Alexi, we've had you on here for over an hour now. Um no probably be respectful yeah. of your time. Help. Um and really, really appreciate you sharing all your all your stories and your insights and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, I want to say that I'm looking forward for this group of UIC guys, though. I, I want to. I know we talk about me and my, but uh, as far as a coach, uh, I like the character of this team, and I, I think I think I'm looking forward. Like Monday cannot come soon enough, you know. Yeah. Um, with these kids, you know, um, it's about them. Whatever my career was, it's never. It's about right. them nowadays, and. Um, you know, I, I actually looking forward because uh, I think we might have something special going this year. So I, I hope I hope they understand the significance of what we're doing over here and uh, get them get them going this year. But yeah. um, UIC UIC people might be hearing this year about about this program, and it all started with your guy, David. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, David Marmon, strength That's and right. conditioning. That's right. Uh, so, yeah. Um, we'll definitely be keeping track of you guys and uh, really, really appreciate you coming on. Anytime you guys need some help with anything. Um, Justin, if you collaborate on some coaching, I would love to learn from you. You know what I mean? Whatever it is, if you have a questions, anything else, uh, it's, you know, my phone is is there. You know what I mean? It, like I said, it's, it's, it's like I said, like you were telling me about it within a couple of phone calls, we can reach to each other. So, right. You know what I mean? It, it is. We are in the same same boat. We are trying to help these young young kids to uh, get to their dreams, or you know, help their experience at what they are right now. So, absolutely. Yeah. Best of luck to you this season, Thanks, and uh, stay healthy through the preseason. And Thanks. And we'll definitely be keeping up with you. And I'm I'm sure I'll see you out recruiting somewhere, and we'll for sure we'll, uh, we'll share some stories. Scott, Justin. Thanks so much, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. All right. Thank you. Take care. See you.